planetarium. My wife has taken the children twice. And how many kids you got? I've got three. And, and when are you gonna stop making babies? As soon as I learn to have protected sex. <laughs> <laughs> that is a simple and accurate, there's no there's, rebuttal to there's that. There's no rebuttal. But that is uh, what that as is. As soon as I learn to have protected sex, I will not be having any more children. <laughs> But I've never taken my kids to the planetarium. Oh, and what, tell me their ages again. So I have a 16-year-old and a 10-year-old. Six and 10 and a, like a and zero. And a three-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, uh -huh. A three-year-old, uh, you know, even though it'd be nice uh, nice to take her because she could still experience yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you just feel it. Yeah, yeah you'll feel it. She could still look up and be uh -huh. like, oh, look at that. That's the nice guy and stuff like that. Uh -huh. You know, she often, she at three years old says this all the time. Daddy, I want to be an astronaut. Really? Yes. Nice. I want to go to the moon. This is what she says all the time. My daughter, who's in Japan this right. summer. That's right. I forgot your daughter okay. in Japan. She, How's she doing there? She loves loving it. Don't get so, mad at me. When your daughter, before she left, uh -huh. so I saw her at the uh, Apollo. Apollo Theater. The Apollo okay. Theater. For, for one of our shows. For one of our shows. Yes. And we were backstage, uh -huh. and she was like, yeah, I'm going to Japan this summer. And I went, all right, so here's the deal. Watch yourself. Don't go crazy. But go a little crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and don't tell your father I said that. Now you tell me this after the <laughs> well, summer's she's over. Well, she's in Japan now, so you know. <laughs> but go ahead. So she said, curiously, because she likes comparing the cultures, the American culture and Japanese culture, not only just the obvious stuff, but subtle things. Like how do people think? How do people, what do people dream of? Right. How do they plan for a future? Right. And how does the language capture that? Ooh. Or not. Right. Certain things exist in some languages that don't exist in others, depending on the need to have that ability to express the ideas and thoughts and dreams and aspirations that makes of a culture. That's true. Okay. Because words are merely containers of things that you actually can associate. Correct. And if there are things to associate in your culture that need a word, you're going to come up with a word for it. Exactly. All right. So what she said was, in Japan, when you ask kids, what do you want to be when you grow up, nobody says, anything that is sort of rare and exceptional. Really? Yeah, they might say a doctor, a lawyer, whatever, but they're not going to say astronaut. Okay. They're not going to say rock star. Okay. They're not going to say prime minister. Right. Whereas in America, when you're young, these are accessible to us, at least psychologically, right. from a very young age. That makes sense. And so it's an interesting contrast. And I can ask, what's going on in the United States that gives people these the, the power to dream that way mm -hmm. against high, statistically improbable odds. Right. Right? Right. So maybe you need that so that the one in a thousand becomes the famous rock star. Right. Or the, see I'm in an SUV, this cab thinks he's going to come in front of me. Just did. Don't even. Oh, don't oh you even. pulled the total <laughs> dick move. You muscled him. You just muscled out a cab. Where did he think he's going? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. And you know what? Here's the thing, too, because he's driving a Ford uh, Focus, uh -huh. so they're tiny cab. That's yeah. a tiny cab. That's a tiny cab. And you basically were just like, uh, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> you, you clotheslined him. <laughs> <laughs>